they get in the vehicle, their drink, uh, the driver has been drinking and uh, he drives the uh, SUV off at a high speed. All four are killed. If you or someone you love has been injured or maybe even killed by a drunk driver, could you have a personal injury case? We're going to find out right now because that's what we're going to ask the lawyer on this episode. Hi again, everybody. I'm Rob Rosenthal with askthelawyers.com. And my guest is Alaska attorney Mark Choate. I want to remind you, if you want to ask Mark any questions about your situation, it's easy. Go to askthelawyers.com. Click the button in the upper right-hand corner that says, ask a lawyer, and it'll walk you right through the process. Doesn't cost anything to get some answers. Mark, good to see you again. Uh, thank you for making some time to help us out. Good seeing you. So what would you like people to know? What should people know about injuries or deaths caused by drunk drivers? Um, I think the, the key thing to understand is that when someone is driving drunk and, um, you know, they, they will obviously get a DWI or a DUI. Uh, if they cause harm to somebody else, frequently there'll be a felony uh, charge against them. Those are all criminal cases, meaning that the government, uh, whether it's a county or a city or the state, will prosecute them to basically make sure that uh, they're punished for this, that they are not going to do it again. It can result in jail time. Uh, it can result in fines, loss of license. But the separate uh, claim is what happens to the people that this person has hurt when they're drunk. And that's the civil side. And the civil side is really the injured person's claims against the drunk driver rather than the government's claims. And what uh, when you have someone who has been drinking and driving and they cause injury or death to somebody else, you can bring a civil claim against them for money damages. And those claims are um, uh, interesting because the law provides that, like for example, here in Alaska, if someone causes you injury and they've been drunk driving, they have to pay 100% of your reasonable attorney's fees. It's a special uh, uh, law that uh, sort of punish, you know, it adds a, some additional uh, uh, dollar cost to it. Uh, you ought, Generally speaking, uh, drunk driving is a something that is covered by someone's insurance policies. Uh, it's not considered the type of intentional act which would take you outside of insurance. So we often see, um, uh, it's funny, uh, a long time ago during the pipeline here in Alaska, there was a lot of drinking and we saw a lot of drunk driving cases, but I'm surprised at how they continue. We continue to see um, uh, people drinking and driving and causing harm and death. And uh, even though I think our, our we approach alcohol a little differently as a society, we still have a lot of people that uh, make really bad decisions. So Mark, does the criminal case have any bearing on the civil case? Let's say for whatever reason, the, the driver uh, doesn't get uh, prosecuted for drunk driving. Does that have any bearing on the civil case? It really, it normally has some bearing. Uh, if in fact there's a, a, a guilty finding, you can use that in a civil case. But frequently people will plead what's called no contest. And that can't be used for civil liability. However, if you've got a strong, you know, DUI case, it's going to be a fairly easy case to make because remember in the criminal context, you've got to show um, proof beyond a reasonable doubt. In the civil context, you have to show by preponderance the evidence, meaning it's just more likely than not that something happened. So you can, um, they're not uh, very difficult cases to prove. These days, we see a lot of on-site video with police, uh, the police are wearing body cameras, Often uh, witnesses, other drivers are taking a video with their cameras and frequently even the drunk drivers before they're in a crash, someone has uh, videoed them on the highway driving badly. So it's a very different world than before. Uh, much more likely you'll get caught these days. If someone, uh, the injured party, uh, is actually in the vehicle with the drunk driver, could they still have a case? They do. They do. There's a, you, can, you have a direct claim against the driver for your uh, injuries, whether it's, uh, you know, serious injuries or even death uh, because of um, bad driving. Uh, the only, um, you know, there's, there are attempts at times to argue that the person riding with the drunk driver is comparatively negligent, but those haven't been very successful. 
generally speaking, we hold the driver responsible. And most often, um, I would say more than half the time, the people who are being injured are the people in the car. You know, it's actually the passengers with the drunk driver. What about family members of the person who, say, is seriously injured or even killed because of the drunk driver? Can they make a claim on their behalf? They can. There's uh, two types of claims that can be made. The first is that um, you can have, uh, basically, if uh, someone is uh, killed, the estate can have a claim. And so uh, we have a, a number of cases going right now against drunk drivers and uh, uh, the entities, the businesses that sold them alcohol illegally, uh, and um, uh, the families are bringing those claims. Uh, you've lost your loved one, you've lost their the time with you, their care, their support, their affection, you know, all the things that come with death. Uh, so families can bring those claims. Also, depending on the state, uh, at times you can have what's called a NIED claim, which is a negligent infliction of emotional distress claim. So in Alaska, for instance, if you come upon the accident scene and you are emotionally shocked or you're called to the hospital and you, you know, you learn and you haven't had time to steel yourself to the fact that your loved one um, has been seriously injured or killed, you can have a additional claim for what's called uh, negligent infliction of emotional distress. And those are, those are serious claims. I mean, they can uh, change your life forever. You mentioned uh, claims against the businesses that sell the alcohol. Tell me a little bit more about that. How are, are they always held responsible? How does that work? Uh, it's very state specific as to how uh, fault will be applied to uh, businesses that sell alcohol to people who are either minors or intoxicated. And um, every state is different, so you've got to understand the state rules. But generally speaking, if someone appears to be intoxicated and or has all the indicators that it looks like um, they are being sold alcohol when everyone would agree they shouldn't have it, uh, you're going to get uh, the opportunity to potentially sue what's called the dram shop. And the dram shop is simply the place providing alcohol. It can be a package store. Uh, we've done them against package stores. Uh, it can be a, a bar. Uh, it can be a bar at a restaurant. Um, any of those um, can become responsible for uh, uh, causing someone injury. You know, the big one normally is if someone's been sitting there for two or three hours and you serve them a dozen drinks, you're going to probably be held responsible. You know, if you walk into the bar and you just have one drink and you've been drinking somewhere else, we're going to look to the other place that you were drinking. Is, is in that situation, the first one you mentioned, is the, is the case against the bartender themselves that serve the drinks or is it also against the establishment? It's against the establishment. The, uh, the establishment, because the, uh, the selling of the alcohol, whether it's a bar or it's a packaged liquor store, is for the benefit of the owners of the, the, the business. The business is held responsible under what's called the doctrine of respondeat superior or master servant. Just means the master is responsible for the, uh, the conduct of the servant. So if the servant um, serves someone who uh, is intoxicated or alternatively um, uh, fails to get a, uh, confirm the age of the person, you just can't serve the minors. And if you do serve to a minor, and minors always try to get alcohol, uh, you know, it's not hard to prevent that if you have a license check and you are trained to be able to pick up, you know, the kind of clearly fake licenses. Tell us a little bit more, Mark, about your experience handling these, these kind of cases. What have you seen? What sort of injuries are usually involved in drunk driving cases? I would say we probably do, you know, three or four a year that involve uh, at least, you know, and we don't have a huge auto practice. We do a lot of other kinds of cases, but three or four a year. Um, this year, uh, we did a couple smaller ones where people had injuries, but they weren't terrible. We also have uh, two separate uh, single vehicle cases, which means it's only the driver and the passengers in the car that were injured in one um, uh, uh, a vehicle after minors were served 
or sold alcohol at two different dram shops. They drove off the road at about 110 miles an hour. It uh, uh, killed a 18-year-old and a 15-year-old in the back of the car. It severely injured um, the passenger in the front. The driver was not that terribly injured, but a huge, huge, huge loss. And a separate one we're just working on um, for fishermen, young fishermen have just come into town from working out in a remote community. They get in a vehicle, they're drink, uh, the driver has been drinking and uh, he drives the uh, SUV off at a high speed. All four are killed. And um, so uh, you have uh, some really, really uh, terrible injuries and um, they're always heartbreaking because uh, you know, we, we have lots of options now for people to do something besides drink and drive. So they're, they're, they're heartbreaking. Lots of uh, really helpful information as always, Mark. Thank you for making some time to answer our questions. You bet. That's going to do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been Alaska attorney Mark Choate. I remind you, if you'd like to ask Mark questions about your situation, just go to askthelawyers.com. Click the button at the upper right-hand corner of the screen that says Ask a Lawyer. And it'll walk you through the very simple process right there. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Rob Rosenthal with Ask the Lawyers.